That's not in that they have seen a great life. I would say from that time, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So without light, no matter what you want to do, it will not, it will not carry much weight for God. Yes, you have a genuine heart, but without light, you will not carry. You, you, would, you would have just a genuine heart for the end day. Are you with me? Hallelujah. All right. Once again, can you celebrate yourself for being around you? Can you talk? Look back. Look back. Can everybody look back? What can we see? Why are we? Why is this the same thing? If you know you need evangelism, raise up your hand. Or you talk to somebody about coming for CSF, raise up your hand. Where are the people you invited? They not come. We should not be this few. We should be looking at having over food like on Sunday. CSF should be like Sunday services. Take it as the body. I'm giving all of you an assignment. Next week, CSF, you should fill the baptism. Which means you should double your prayer for CSF. All right. Who can remind us what we did? Before we start, um, can we celebrate someone that is very special to my heart? Can we celebrate Pastor Joey? Can we celebrate the best Pastor Joey? Can we celebrate Pastor Joey? Because look at one that's always pushing me to do the things that I do sometimes. The one that's always pushing the technical Can we celebrate the best Pastor Joey? I show it by you. Wherever you are. Oh, see, can we celebrate Pastor Grace? Can we celebrate all the headphones in the house? Can you celebrate yourself? Why did you start? Can you celebrate yourself? Hallelujah. Alright. So before I start, um, I would like to give honor to somebody that is very, very special in our midst. Um, the, we have an alumni in our midst. Don't oh. worry, it might not, if you look back, it might not mean. He was the um, VP1 of Ibubu Campus for the last session. Can we celebrate Pastor Fabio in the If you don't want to come to the front, but we give honor to him. Thank you very much for being here. Alright, who can remind us what we did last week? Alright. Um, if you went back to your room, can you start at the end? Wonderful. So nobody, these people are not local, like the Varian Christians. Okay. The reason why you have loads is so that you can go back to them. Some people don't have loads to begin with. So how do you want to go back to them? Take it as, as a duty to go back to your... It's not, you don't want, it's not your chemistry book or your, or your Lotte's book that you have to read like 10 pages of... Sorry. 100 pages. So just go through it. It's not difficult. Alright, so without wasting time, fighting the good fight of faith too. Fighting the good fight of faith. So first Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Yeah, yeah, please you can read. Fight the good fight on true faith. Both fight into eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared to work for me. Please can you can you read it again now? Thank you very much, ma. I hope everybody has opened to it. You have not opened to it. First thing we'll see. Let me know which time. We have, we have a number of this recently. You see, um, we have already established this last week that there's no way in the Bible that a new, new Testament believer is called to fight Satan. There's no, it's not written in the New Testament. The New Testament believer is not called to fight Satan. Even for places that we see, 
like in Ephesians chapter 6, when the Bible says, we'll be wrestling not against flesh and blood. They won't rest with death. After everything, the Bible says, stand. That means you are not you are not wrestling or you are not fighting from the standpoint of defeat. You are, start, you are fighting from the standpoint of victory. Which means that whatever you do, you're, on your good day or your bad day, you win. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's because of what Jesus Christ has done. Jesus Christ has, he has the Bible says, having blotting out the handwriting of the evil one, he made a public show over there. So whatever you do, even on the days that you feel like you did not pray well, eh, you are still one. Because it's not the time you are fighting. What you are fighting is a good fight for you. And then Jesus Christ has come to come and win the fight for you. So people wake up, oh my God, I did not fight, oh Satan is... Even on your bad day, eh, you are still one. Because you are not fighting to me. You are fighting from victory. Are you with me? Yes, sir. You have already established that last week. So today, um, what you are talking about is very sensitive. It's good to be. It's, it is very sensitive. Let me just say that. Um, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Can we read together one to go? Lay hold on the canal like thou and also called. First Timothy chapter 6, verse we are coming together one to go. Alright. The fight of faith. Uh, let's start from the we always starting from the old testament. Mike is doing so much. The fight of faith has largely been individualistic from the old testament. From the Old Testament, we saw it that different people engaged in different battles individually. And God engaged people individually in the Old Testament. It was not something that was collective. It was something that. Bro, like, what was happening to Mike? It was something that was. Don't distract it. It was something that was individualistic. That's why we see that God will come and meet Cain. You will talk to Cain. God will go and meet Abel. You will talk to Abel. The place, but the places that we saw God communicating with different people was because the people that we are, um, people of God were together. It was not common to see things generalized. They were individualistic. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's why we see that the Bible says that um, when God came to come and meet, what is it? Um, when God came to come and meet David, God came to come and meet him individually. When God came to come and meet Abraham, the Bible says God appeared to Abraham. Everything that was in the Old Testament was individualistic. It was not general. Let me try to balance that. And then there was a reason God did that. And because everything was individualistic, so it that all of them thought they were about to be individualistic. Are you with me? When, uh, what's his name? Joseph. When David wanted to fight, when Joseph wanted to fight, when Daniel, okay, Daniel did not fight, when Abraham wanted to fight, all of them thought they were about to do individually. Joseph had to go through everything he went through without anybody's help. His, his own brother sold him. So they were fighting, but their fight was not a good fight. Hallelujah. No, leave them, leave them today. They were fighting, but their fight was not a good fight. What, is, what differentiates you from Abraham? Is the fact that Abraham fought a fight, but you are fighting a good fight. And what makes the fight a good fight, like I have said, is the fact that whether you are on your bad day or on your good day, you will win because you have already won. Are you with me? All right. So, for everything that we saw in the Old Testament, it was largely individualistic. The Bible says something, and Enoch walked with God. The Bible did not say, and Enoch generation. And Enoch, when God appeared to a man, this man was called Noah. The Bible called Noah a righteous man. The Bible says, and God told Noah. So everything that God did was, he told specific people. So it was those people that would go and tell the people. And for the first time, we saw it in the book of Exodus that God wanted to come to a group of people. Those are who we got in Israel. The Bible says, and God told Moses that I want to make them a kingdom of priests. But they rejected it. So for the first time, we would have seen it that God would have appeared to everybody at once. Well, God would have communicated with everybody at once. But they did not accept it. They were scared. They were like, oh my God, no, it's most only Moses. Are you with me? So, 
Um, the fact that we saw that it meant that all of them had to fight their battles individually. Amen. Can we read can we read first Samuel? First Samuel. Chapter. Oh uh, let's check chapter twelve. It's not chapter two. Ah. Who knows the place where David was fighting? First Samuel chapter seventeen. Yes, I'm correct. First Samuel chapter seventeen. If you are there, please can you read? Okay, let's start from this one. The Bible says now the Philistines gathered together the army, their armies to battle, and we gathered together at Shoko. And after that, and after that, we see that the Philistine, that was Goliath, he came, and then when he came, he said that who is there? Is there anybody that can come and fight me? So everything they were used to battles that were individualistic because it was not famous for a group of people to come together to come and fight. For the people that we saw it in Israelite, and those were they were always fighting war. Even for the sons of the prophets, eh? those people were in a group, but they did not have one voice. Are you with me? If you are looking at me like you read your Bible, they were together, but they did not have one voice. It was after um, Elijah had departed, or before Elijah was to depart, that we saw that you will come and meet Elijah. Your master is going to one person to come and meet him. After he has gone to a further place, another person to come and meet him. After he has gone, another person come and meet him. They did not have one voice. So God engaged with people individually. Have I tried to establish that fact now? Yes, sir. Alright. So um, the fact the reason why God had to do that was because there were certain things that God wanted to do. But the Bible says the heart of man was desperately wicked. So what God did was that God looked for a man in a place. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, I sought for a man. So God was constantly looking for a man because God did not, it was not, it was rare for him to see people that their hearts were not wicked. The Bible says the heart of man was desperately wicked. That was in the book of Genesis chapter 6. And when God looked, the Bible says the heart of man was wicked. So God tried to look, if I try to do this thing individually, God did not, God, God loved men right from time, but God did not trust. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, so because of that, all of them had to go through different casualties. They had to live their lives in isolation. Can we, can we check the life of um, Elijah? Second king, first kings. First kings chapter 17. Verse 1. Okay, let me do it. Let me read. The Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be not dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. Verse 2. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Even God had to tell Elijah to run. Because God realized that for each mission, for each purpose that anybody in the Old Testament had to, had to walk through, it was individualistic. And God had to retain the men because the men at that time were not plenty. Are you with me? So all of them were run. And then we we'll see that Elijah was an anointed man. But Elijah ran almost for his life. Because Jezebel chased him. And because Jezebel chased him, this man was not able to accomplish the things that he, was, he wanted to. The Bible says that when he heard that, even Elijah was afraid. When he heard that Ahab was coming, Elijah went. God. So the Bible now says that Elijah will not go to the brook Jerry to go and drink water. When he now goes there to go and drink water, the Bible will now say something that God will not send him to go and meet the widow at Zarephath. All this is all this is all this. This man was, he was, imagine somebody like, um, who would like God now? For an, an example, Apostle Edu or Apostle Selman. You see them one day inside the bush hiding. How does this sound? That's a, no, let me not jump. But that can let me cement the reality that that cannot happen now. Now, do you see that why that was happening was because of man's sin. And because man's sin, it was it was it was difficult for God to engage everybody because there had to be a 
there have to be a set of um how do I put this? There has to be a set of structure that God would have followed so that everybody becomes to himself. That's why God had to wait in the New Testament. And the reason why God had to wait in the New Testament was because of the kind of structure that was in the New Testament. What we call apostles today, or the reason why God did not come when... Let me, let me count down and explain this thing. Okay, there have been different empires and kingdoms since the beginning of the Bible. There was the empire of Egypt, right? There was the empire of Sodom, right? Yes, there was the empire of Babylon, right? Yes, Which other one? one? Which one? Yes, Joshua. There was the empire of Persia in Babylon. There was the empire of Rome. Uh, God could not come in the Old Testament. People say, why did God not come immediately after man saying this, 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 this? God could not come because of the kind of structure that was there. The kind of structure in the Old Testament was destabilized. So much to say that Egypt represented a spiritual system that we called oppression. So God could not come at the time when people were being oppressed. What God wanted to do was to bring forth or to pronounce liberation. Hallelujah. God could not come at a time whereby, okay, the next after Egypt was Sodom. Sodom represents immorality. God could not come at a time whereby there was immorality because God was not preaching immorality. What God was preaching was salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God could not come at a time, Babylon. God could not come at a time whereby Babylon represents lawlessness. Whereby there was lawlessness. There was no need for, because everybody did anything anyhow. They kept the you see Nebuchadnezzar, he did anything he wanted, anyhow he wanted, and this, that. So God could not come there because he would have distorted the, the purposes of God. God would not have done everything he wanted to. So God had to wait for the New Testament so that the kind of structure that was there would be suitable for God to come through. Are you with me? And then Rome represented the best kind of structure for God to follow. Because for the very first time, the soldiers in Rome eh, were who we call apostles. Apostle is not a is not a Christian word. It was not coined from the Christian word. Apo, and apostle is quoted from the word apostolos. Apostolos means the sent one. So the sent one were the people that they sent, and the, the people they sent were soldiers. They sent them to go and do this and do that and do that. So God had to wait. God saw that okay, Rome represented a place that because Rome had different roads, it had different routes. From here, from Agoy where you now, you can go to Shagam. Because from Egypt, it had just one route. That's why the Israelites, when they wanted to leave Egypt, they had to follow one place. And it's that one place that Pharaoh followed. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, Rome represented different roads, different systems. And then God saw that, okay, this is the best with the movie. Because the Bible says that when Jesus Christ was ascending to heaven, he said, go and preach the gospel everywhere. And the, the, the Christians at that time were living in Rome. So also, okay, if they are living in Rome and then there is a road like this and there is a road like this and there are people that are called apostles that can use the system. So that was the best fit system for God to use. Are you with me? So the people in the Old Testament, they fought different battles and then because they fought their battles individually, they, their results were not futile. Even for the best of them, they did not still accomplish everything that God wanted them to accomplish. The Bible says, and they, Still looked forward to that promise. Hallelujah. So even on your best day, eh, you still have more privilege than Abraham. On your on your best day, you still have more privilege than Joseph. You still have more privilege than Enoch. Because they did not have the Holy Spirit living on their inside. But you have the Holy Spirit living on your inside. Let's not rush. But from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, can we go there? He's still fighting the good fight of faith. Just follow me. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, let's start from verses... Uh, from verses 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For everything that we saw there, what well, what's the common word? The common thing that we see there is is what? Six. That's not that. There's a common thing. 
Okay. English. English. Let's do English. Um, what we saw did this, are they singular or are they plural? They are, they are plural. So the things that we are supposedly wrestling with are not in singular. They are in plural. And these were the things that people in the Old Testament were wrestling with. They were in plural. So in most cases, the reason why it looked as if they were slow, the reason why it looked as if Joseph had to go through everything they went through was because Joseph had to battle a lot of things. David had to battle a lot of He had to battle, and these things were in plural. Principalities. Powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. The last one is spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness, in, if you check on that translation, it means spiritual wicked spirits. Plural. So Elijah, as another as Elijah was, Elijah was still running because of the kind of thing, the kind of structure he was going with. And then we see that Elijah said, Ah, oh God, this is too much for me. I'm the only one that is left. God said, Are you oh, calm down? I know you are not there, but calm down. God said. Go and check these other people. They are more bowed down to God. If Elijah had, if he had coupled, if he had had a collab, not collab, I'm telling political science, it's something we call coalition and alliance. If he had come together with these other prophets to have one voice against Jezebel and Baal, Elijah would not have run almost all his life. Are you with me? Yes. For that kind of structure was not set in place at that time. Amen. So we we'll see that this man will run and then <laughs> okay. Let me say this. Is it is something that let me see it. The spirit of Elijah is not exactly Elijah is not just a person, Elijah is this kind of system. And then we'll see that Elijah, the spirit of Elijah first started with Enoch. That we don't have time to explain all that. After Enoch, Elijah. After Elijah, he went to join the Baptist. After John the Baptist, the Bible says Elijah will see God again. That means Elijah is not just Elijah needs to be on the earth for God to do specific things. Do you get what I'm saying? And then when the spirit of Elijah translated to Enoch in the New Testament, the same battle that Elijah fought was the same thing that um, John the Baptist fought. But John the Baptist did not know that he was fighting the battles of Elijah. Hallelujah. So John the Baptist had to go, he wanted to do the, 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 the same things that Elijah did. For example, this man wanted to go and fight, or he wanted to... He, your work is simple. Go and prepare the way for Jesus Christ. Nobody sent you to go and talk, or to go and abuse people, or to go and... Yes, Herod was very wrong at that time, but nobody sent you to talk. This man had to go and say, ah, you are sleeping with your husband's wife, and your... Because of that, because he went out of... Let me say something, that the power of God is inside the purpose of God. As long as we see John the Baptist in the purpose of God, everything that he will do will be inside the will of God. For example, this man will come and he will come and cry, prepare everybody, even the Pharisees and the Sadducees become. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious rulers at that time. They are pride. But they came to come and meet him. Hallelujah. So John the Baptist fought a lonely kind of battle and because of that he died. He told the Baptist that God to go and meet Jesus Christ. Ah, I know you are the Messiah. Because he knew that he was the Messiah. When the time came that this man now doubted Jesus Christ, he said, he told his disciples, go and ask this man, are you truly the Messiah? So this man, because of the kind of heart posture that he had carried along the line, this man went out of purpose. And because he went out of purpose, he started fighting his battles individually in the New Testament. And in the New Testament, Testament rather, one of the things that God wants to do one of the things that God has orchestrated is such that nobody will fight a battle individually again. Hallelujah. Amen. If you check the Acts of the Apostles, that talks about the church very well. I think that's in the book of the Bible that talks about the church in most. We will say that for everything that they did, the Bible says, and they, plural, they were together in one accord. And they continued in the Apostles' doctrine. And they, the Bible says, and when it was time for prayer, Peter and John, they went is beautiful. Everything was largely there. It was not I. It was not and God walked with Adolf. It was not the only person that looked like he was going to be let me not use the word dominant but reoccurring in the New Testament is Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul needed people. This man still went to go and meet um, the apostles in Jer- um, Jerusalem after he 
Bible says he went to Arabia for three years. He came back to Jerusalem. He came to come and look for. So Apostle Paul himself could not do it alone. That's why we see it for Apostle Paul's missionary journey. He will go with Barnabas. He will go with Saul. He will go with Tim. He went with everybody because he could. It was like he knew the principle was largely not to be alone. Hallelujah. Acts chapter one. If you are looking at me, I don't like it. Acts chapter one. <coughs> Um, okay, let, let's read Acts chapter 2. Let's not waste time. Acts chapter 2, from verse 1. Let's read together. One, two, go. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were. We can stop there. Now, this, the mic is not loud again. Can you hear me at the back? Okay, now this reality, Bible says they were together in one accord. It was not common in the Old Testament. Although, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, the Bible says do not neglect the garden of the brethren. But we did not see it as, as common like that. And what we started seeing was in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. You who will not distract me today. So, because of that, the purposes of God would come faster. Amen. Hallelujah. Because what we okay? What what is our um our word for this session? Our theme for this session? Who knows it? The, now, for each church that is going to be built, there needs to be a compendium of people that can work together. Because the Bible says many are sent, and against some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers, and some pastors for the edifying of the body. If the body is not edified, the body, the, the, the work of God is not going to come to the church. Hallelujah! If the gates of hell is prevailing, it means we have not become the church of Christ. And one of the things that Jesus Christ came to come and do in the New Testament was to show us that the old way is not how we are supposed to live in the New Testament. Because a lot of believers, their knowledge is still solely based on the Old Testament. Their doctrine, the most of the doctrine that they have is the Old Testament doctrine. So we will see that the conversations that they are having, the things that they are saying, the kind of life that they are living is an old test. They are not wrong, but it's not complete. Hallelujah. All right. Um, let's read. I said, let's, let me read from my notes. Oh, help us, Jesus. Can we read Matthew chapter 16? Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Syria, he asked his disciples, What do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. 17. Jesus replied, You are blessed. Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You do not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the powers of hell will not conquer it. Okay, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate that please? Um, for, let me say this now, that for every church that we would need to be established, that church, first of all, needs to work in unity. Because for the kind of things that we are facing, eh, it requires that we come in one voice. And then when I see that the body of Christ is divided today, it means that the body of Christ has not still come to maturity. Because the devil is, the devil knows that he has lost. I said this last week that the devil does not have truth, he does not have time, he does not have the truth. The devil knows that time is not on his side. So what the devil is trying to do is that he is no longer trying to attack the church from outside. Because he cannot attack the church from outside. What he's doing is that he's trying to come and attack the church from inside from inside the church because he knows that if he tries to do it from outside he cannot prevail. He's, he's now trying to come and attack Christians with Christians. This was the things that Apostle Paul tried to correct in the Corinthian church. Strife was there. 
People were giving themselves to isolation. So much to say that people will be suffering from certain things. They will not want to talk. They will be shy. If you check the Bible, eh, one of the reasons why the church was so profound, why people were added, the Bible says that daily, a large number of people were added to the church was because they did things in common. So much to say that you know the, the person that is rich from the person that is poor. And then that was what this man, Ananias and Sapphira, that was the kind of structure that they, they meant. Because uh, everybody was selling their land to go and give to the church. Those ones who nice to go and sell their land, they not lied. So the kind of love that was in the church was so much that this people made, it's made people to lie. <laughs> That's the kind of church that Jesus Christ built. Because Jesus Christ, when he came, he tried to come and correct the notion of just the Old Testament walking in isolation. Because he knew, he knew. The Bible says something that when Moses was to leave Egypt, the Bible says that God told Moses, judge the gods of Egypt. God, not God. So because God was the one that gave Moses the authority, Moses could preside over them. Now, if you check the New Testament, we'll see that for each person that tried to do it alone, eh, they did not succeed. If you check the life of Apostle James, this man was an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle of Jesus Christ. If that Herod carried him, and Herod killed him, nothing happened. Because the church did not pray. The Bible says immediately they carried him. The Bible says Herod, when Herod saw that he pleased the Jews, he carried him. The Bible says immediately the church saw that they carried him, that they made prayer. Immediately they made prayer. That night, it was not the next day. That night, gone, 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 gone. The angel of the Lord appeared. And then because they did not stop praying, that angel, the angel of the Lord did not go to heaven immediately. The angel of the Lord went to King Herod's palace because Herod had pride. <laughs> that was a very, very funny story. Herod had pride. He was saying, ah, the people were worshipping him. Because the angel of the Lord had it. The struck him. <laughs> immediately, because people were praying. Which means that there is power when people do things in unity. Because when you come to the church today, we are not just coming to come and see one person. You are coming to come and see different possibilities in God. So much you say that you can touch my brother here, you will see a possibility that we call wisdom. You can touch my sister, you will see a possibility that we call knowledge. You will touch another person, you will see a possibility we call healing. Nobody can do it alone. That's why even Jesus Christ did this with men. Jesus Christ did their people. Because if Jesus Christ did not have men, when he died and went to heaven, nobody would have carried the gospel for him. So he trained those men and taught them the power of unity, and they did not fully understand it when he went to heaven. So when he went, it now occurred to them that, yes, we are supposed to walk in unity. Because Satan is not relenting. The, the systems of Satan, they are not new, but they are not also old. It is just, um, the, as technology is going, it is going with technology. So it is the same system. So much you say that the same way Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, it is the same way Satan tempted Jesus Christ. It is the same food. The first thing was food. I'm sure if Adam, if Adam and Eve had overcome the first temptation. The same thing that Jesus Christ overcame the second time. Satan would have been, he would have come again. Are you with me? Yes, <laughs> oh, I don't like how you are looking at me, Jesus. Are you, are you sure you are with me? Yes, the New Testament is a testament of the fact that Jesus Christ has won. But, he has no one. The Bible says, and Jesus said, I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, which means that when we come with one voice, there is nothing Satan can do. Absolutely nothing. This is why we saw that one of the bodies of Paul was such that he could build churches. And one of the things he taught them in the churches was the power of unity. Because as long as you are united, the Bible says something in the book of Jude. The Bible says, for there is a new doctrine, the doctrine of the doctrine of Balaam. The Bible now says something in Revelation, the way of Balaam. Because we are in the end time, we will start seeing things that resonate with the Old Testament. Hey, oh Jesus, Jesus help us. Spirit. Okay. Don't worry. Because we are in the end time, we will start seeing things that the devil will start bringing. They will look new, but they are not new. Because the Bible says, um, no weapon fashion against us shall prosper, right? Every weapon from the against us shall be condemned. Which means that the devil has weapons. The devil himself has weapons. But the thing is that the fact that the devil has weapons means that God himself knew that the devil has weapons. So God gave us his own weapons. If you check the book of Ephesians chapter 6, you will see the weapons of God clearly outlined there. Now, that was what we did. Can we still leave the Bible study in it? The Bible study.
That was what we did yesterday. And that clearly, if you, are, if you did not attend, it is your business. That was everything we did yesterday. Because if you don't have one, well, just to emphasize the fact that the New Testament believers today have lost what it means to be New Testament believers. Because one of the reasons why we saw it is that people saw Apostle Paul and um, Barnabas and they said they wanted to become Christians was because they saw them acting like Christ. Even Philip, when Philip went to Samaria, eh, Philip did everything that he could do. Philip didn't to go and call Peter. It's not because Philip could not do it. Not because Philip could not baptize them in the Holy Ghost. It was because Philip realized that if people are close to me like Peter and uh, the apostles, why can't I call them? He, they did things so much in common that the kind of results they produced, they would die together. I know the story of a man, John Hoss. This man and his son, they were to kill them today. They were to kill them the next day because we were preaching the gospel. That was in Rome at that time. So they carried them and put them in prison. The night that they were to die, these people were jubilating. They were singing. The soldiers were confused. You are dying tomorrow. Why are you singing? They said, we are going to scatter a geese. Is it a geese or a goose? English. God's people. English. Is it a geese or goose for one? Goose. You are, you are scratching a geese. Hey. You are scratching a goose. But 100 years from now, you will see the rise of the flocks of geese at the goose. You get what I'm saying? Huh? They killed them the next day, but they were celebrating when they were killing them. It is some people now that said, ah, leave my son. Let, let me put my heritage. So they died together. Every, for everything that they did, when you to kill um, the apostles, each of the apostles died at separate time. They died at separate time because they carried them. You might be, let's say you go to go and preach the gospel in this place because they were killing them slowly. Let's say Peter goes to go and preach the, uh, the gospel in um, Kapano. Paul goes to go and preach it in Rome. They will not carry them one by one. And because they carried them one by one, they died. Are you with me? Yes, one of the last apostles that we saw in the New Testament was Apostle John. And then, Apostle John, when he wrote the book of Revelation, he said, I am your brother. That is in tribulation. He did not say, I am your brothers. I am your brother. And the reason why I would have seen that Apostle John, after everything he did, he still died, was because there was nobody there to comfort him. <laughs> as weird as this sounds, it is true. When Apostle Paul was in prison, eh, the Bible says, I am in prison. And then Silas is comforting me in prison. He said, Your brother, you, is comforting me in prison. Apostle Paul was in prison, but he wrote the happiest book of the Bible. Last Philippians, because somebody was with him. Hallelujah. There are specific people in our generation today that they are going through a lot of things, but they feel like I don't trust this person, so I cannot. Or the reason why they don't tell another person is because they have done something to this person. Let's say they've abused them, or they have insulted them. That's why we talked about character. Because character will help you go a very, very long way. Because one of the things that Jesus Christ taught us was love. When he directed to answer Jesus Christ, how many times should I forgive my neighbor? He did not say, he, what, what he was trying to say was not uh, about the time. It was about the heart. No matter how many times your brother does exist, you are not supposed to hate him. Hallelujah. Because the time that you will come back, you will hate him. And then when you need his help for a certain thing, he might not, you might not be able to see for him to help you. As much as you are walking in what we call unity, you walk in the alignment of God. Because for everything that we saw in the New Testament, that God did, God did it when people were here together. When people were here together. The Bible says something that Cornelius, when Cornelius um, wanted to go and call Peter, after he went to go and meet Peter, oh, the people of the servants of Cornelius went to go and meet Peter, after they met Peter, when Peter came, Peter was astonished. Peter went back, and when he went back, he went to go and tell them. When he told them, they stretched their feet. The Bible says, and then when the people were persecuted, that's Peter and um, John and James, when they were persecuted in the house of Herod, uh, was he Herod? Was he Herod? The king at that time, so the Bible says, and they came together and they prayed. When they prayed, the place that they were was shaking. So for you to see the power of God, there needs to be a compendium of people that walk in the will of God. Let me tell you now that we are now in a place that if you isolate yourself, you are not different from Elijah. You are not different from Moses. And I think people, they, the kind of life that they lead, if you are leading, you die, people that accuse Adam and Eve, or they say, you, you, it's because you have not lived their kind of life. And that, that was because they were disadvantaged. But the Bible says, you have seen the promise. 
This is a very, very simple thing when you carry much power. You cannot ever overemphasize the power of the church. What comprises of the church is not me. It is not you. It is we. It is plural, not singular. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The fight of faith is different in the Old Testament and in the New. It was just the fight of faith in the Old, but in the New it is the good fight of faith. Because no matter how you want to do it, you have won. You are not fighting, let me say this, you are not fighting from, or you are not fighting for victory rather. You are fighting from victory. We rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power. Some people, they, let's say, let's say some people say they saw, or they, they have encounters, or they see this, they see this, TV. except if it is things that God tells you to keep to yourself. If you, if you see things, there are specific people in the Bible that they saw angels in the New Testament. When Mary Madani saw the angel of God, you have she went to go and pronounce, I've seen it. It's the truth, because there is, if she had not got to go and tell Peter, it means that the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he had just come not according to the disciples. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So people that they say, ah, I have encounters. Oh my God, I saw, I don't want to be a lie. Except if it is that God specifically instructs you not to tell anybody. The fight of it is such that you can have a compendium of people. And then these people, first of all, have to be righteous people. Oh my God. I'm going to say something though. Let's receive. And then for a church to be established, the church has to encounter Jesus in three different ways. Number one, Jesus the Savior. Number two, Jesus the Lord. Number three, Jesus the Son. It's not the same thing. The Bible says, for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why people feel as though Jesus Christ is not their Savior is because they don't even know what happened to them when they accepted Christ. The Bible says, the grace of the Lord, not the grace of the Savior. Jesus Christ is, is, is the savior of everybody, but he's not the lord of everybody. But for him to become your lord, he better to become your savior. What is salvation? What is more for Hassan? Who wants for Hassan? I think it's better money. I'm not going to text you. Yeah? Let me tell you what salvation is. <laughs> That's your assignment. For Jesus Christ to, for you to become a Christian, you need to accept Christ. When you accept Christ, you will encounter Jesus the Savior. Now, Jesus Christ is the Savior, or Jesus Christ has, perhaps it's for God to love the world that he gives to his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God has appeared to everybody. The Bible says, for the grace that worketh salvation has appeared to all men. For everybody going to hell for you today. Let me say this. For everybody going to hell for you today, they are going to hell for you because they cannot accept forgiveness. God has, he has forgiven everybody. Everybody. So, the first thing you need to do to establish a church is to encounter Jesus the Savior. So that when you encounter Jesus the Savior, we talked about grace. What grace will do for you is that grace will bring to you a compendium of things. For example, grace is not just the forgiveness of sins. Inside grace is prosperity. Inside grace is innovation. Inside grace is everything that you need. Inside grace is the Holy Spirit. So if you have, if you accept Christ, you have the possibilities of God. So Jesus Christ cannot give you, he, he cannot give you all these things, first of all, if you do not accept him. Are you with me? Some people, somebody came to my meeting one day in my room and he told me that um, some people were preaching the gospel to him and they were preaching the Holy Spirit to an unbeliever. That's a very, very wrong recipe. You preach Jesus Christ to an unbeliever. You preach the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ and God to a believer. Because the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, if you preach to your remembrance all that I have taught you, the Holy Spirit cannot negate anything that Jesus Christ is not doing. So you need to encounter Jesus Christ first before the Holy Spirit. The second is Jesus the Lord. You see, Jesus is the Savior of every Christian. But Jesus Christ has not become the Lord of every Christian. What does it mean to be Lord? To, to be Lord means you, you rule over somebody. You, you, you are the head of somebody. So much you say that the person cannot do anything without your consent. For example, there was a man that we called the centurion of in the Bible. The Bible says this man said, he said something to Jesus Christ. He said, I am a man that is under authority. Lordship means that you know the things that you want to do, but you still go and ask, should I do? Are you with me? 
Jesus Christ has appeared to every Christian. To every Christian, you have encountered Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is not just in one way. He's in two ways. Number one, he's in the written word and he's in the living word. So it is when you encounter the written word that is now progressing to the living word. Some people want to have physical encounters with Jesus Christ when they have not had an encounter with the written word of Jesus Christ. Meaning, not knowing that the two of them are the same thing. They are as potent as the other. Hallelujah. The second is Jesus the Lord. There was a man in the Bible that we called David. David wanted to go and fight the battle. So, the Bible says, after David was, he knew that he was going to win. But he said to him, ask God, God, should I overtake? God said overtake. Should I spoil? God said spoil. Even for the things that you know does not make sense. Eh? It means that when Jesus Christ has become your Lord, you will choose not to do them when you are not asked. As, as irrelevant as it may be, for a church to be established, you need to see that they make Jesus Christ their Lord. Because when you make Jesus Christ your Lord, you will always be in the will of God. And when you are always in the will of God, the devil cannot penetrate. Hallelujah. The third is Jesus the Son. We don't have much time. Jesus the Son means that after he has now become your Lord, he cannot take you through rigorous tests. Not tests. He can take you through rigorous processes. So much to say that he wants to make you look more like him. So he teach you the way of waiting on him. An average believer wants to have the power of God. But an average believer has not learned the first step. That is waiting on God. What does he need to wait? It means that you will learn how to pray. You will learn how to stay with God. Even when it looks as if God is not there. You will stay. Because God is a king spirit. What is a king spirit? A king spirit is somebody that is different from every other spirit because God is the spirit that created every other one. It's meaning that God is high. Some people, let me say now, some people feel the opposite of God is Satan. Remove that theology from your head because the opposite of Satan is not even in the mic. The opposite of God, God doesn't have an opposite. Amen. Amen. So, if you would, um, have to build a church that can fight because we, for you to fight the good fight of faith, we need to fight as a church, not just individually. A church is not just one person, a church is two, three, four, an entire body of people. So much to say that you will come to the church, you will not need to go and meet the pastor, you will just need the usher. The usher will hear your sickness. That is, that is where we are truly working, or when we say we have started truly really working in the will of God. For you to fight the good fight of faith. You need to come and fight, not individually, but as a body. Can you bow down your head? Where Moses fell, I will not fail. You have gone before
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's nice to see your faces. You guys are looking very, very nice. All right. Um, I'm an alumni, so it's nice to be back here. I think about five years ago, um, I was in the choir department, and this is, that's the best department. That's the best department. All right. Um, that's where my journey began, and can, can you celebrate your pastor? Can you celebrate your pastor? I was talking to to Badnos, uh, which most of you know as Mr. Badnos. I was telling Badnos that ah, um, these guys are eating word here. Yeah, you get? I'm, I'm serious. The potency of the word here yeah, is very very solid. Are you with me? I have learned a lot of things. I'm serious. My spirit is fed up, like it's fed up already. I've learned a lot of things. The good fight of faith is a solid thing. Alright, so, um, can we pray in the spirit for one minute? Can we pray in the spirit? Bakida, Abadika, Dus, Redika, Bedes, Abadika, Dabada, Abadika, Dus, Kuda, Abedada, Breka, Deva, Kida, Abadaka, Berita, Kosa. that you guys appreciate your pastor, I know what I'm saying, because um, the ability to hear from God is very, very important. Hallelujah. Amen. He started by talking about revelation, and before he even talked about it, I had that in my spirit. And also, I what I also um, had, I received another thing in the spirit, as I was seated back there, um, I think while he wanted to start the sermon, I saw a warrior. And the Lord began to talk to me about the warrior church. I did not know you were going to preach about the fight of it. And the Lord began to talk to me about the warrior church, about how God wants to shift the chapel of abundant life, agoy away into the season of being warriors. So that means God is interested in raising warriors among us. They are soldiers. All of us we are soldiers of Christ. Hallelujah. But God wants to bring us to that point where we are commandos. Soldiers are different from commandos. And one of the things you notice is that their training is also, di- is also different. Are you with me? Their training is quite different. You send their, yes, there are some battles you send soldiers to, but then there are some battles you send commandos to. Hallelujah. And, okay, let's read together. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. That was the scripture God imprinted in my spirit. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. And it says what? As it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, Neither has it entered into the heart of men the things which the Lord has prepared for them to love them. For God has read them to us by His Spirit, for the Spirit such as was. See, we all need to crave the ability to see or to hear from God. And even from this verse, one of the things you notice is that there are three major ways which God speaks to us. Are you with me? Through sight, spiritual hearing, and what? Knowing of our hearts. Now, to every of these dimensions, and to every of these dimensions of from God, there are also sub dimensions under them. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you talk about revelation, it's very important that you have sight in the spirit. When you when you come to church and the pastor says, Let's pray, you should the Bible says that he that prays to God must believe that's what God will speak to him. God is going to receive from God. So when your pastor said you should pray, you should have it in your mind that God wants to speak to you. And I believe that's the stage God is bringing us to. A warrior, a warrior who needs to function by sight. And one of the things the Lord began to tell me also is that as He's bringing us into the warrior church, the, the season of warriors, 
He's also he's going to be equipping us with wisdom and skill. Can you hear me at the back? He's going to re- he's going to equip us with what wisdom and what. Now, um, all right. Uh, as I was sitting, I saw a lot of things. That's something about being prophetic. All of us are prophetic. Hallelujah. But it is a gift that can be sharpened. Right with me. And before I go, I, I hope your pastor permits me just for like five seven minutes. We can just run practicals on just so that everybody can press into it. So many of us have. I missed out on the speakings of God in our lives. When you step free, God was communicating to you, but you did not know. Hallelujah. I was once like that. And I know there are people like that here. You know, your work with God will be actually very weird if you don't hear from God. It's very boring. Though. Do you know? It's very boring. I know most of you have heard that. Ah, someone will say that I saw something now. Someone will be like, I, I, this is what I have in my spirit. But there are guidelines to these things. Hallelujah. It's very important, very important for us to, to shift into these things and work in these things. Beyond all the things your pastor has taught you, you need to go back and go and practicalize. You need to practicalize a lot, a lot, a lot. And as the Lord was putting this in my heart, when he was talking about it, before he even talked about revelation, this was what God put, it, um, put inside my heart. And revelation is very important. Reveal to us either by knowing, by hearing, or by seeing. And I pray that we come into it in the name of Jesus. Come close our eyes. Let's just run practical for two minutes. Uh, I want to share four things with you. Just close your eyes. When we want to sharpen our medi- um, sharpen our our ability to hear from God, we need to take hold of meditation properly. Meditation is very very important. Meditation of the eyes, of the heart rather, and meditation of the mouth, even visualizing Joshua when he says do not let the book of the Lord depart from thy mouth but meditate on it day and night at a meditation Psalm 19 verse 14 says let the word of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy presence also another realm of meditation was when God asked Jeremiah what do you see this was a practical session God was asking what do you see and at the end of the day, God, he, he, God told him that you have seen well. And I posted something on my status today that it's not enough to see. You also need to interpret what you have seen. Very, very important. God has spoken to many of us, but the thing is that most times we are not always conscious. We don't even know what that even is God that is talking to us. Somebody beside you. Amen. The Lord, you are going to bring them into a ship. Can we say in the name of Jesus? Say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, activate my spiritual senses today. Say, Lord, activate my spiritual senses today. Can we begin to rise in the spirit? And as you are praying in the spirit, you need to set your atmosphere in such a way that you know that God is going to speak to you. But the Lord has revealed those things unto us. For the spirit of God, such as he is the deep things of God. Separate the guy You don't need to pray for ten minutes to hear what God is saying.
from what we were singing. If you know a song dropped here, raise up your hand. All right. Did you raise up your hand when I said, did you hear from God? Did you raise up your hand? <clears throat> Do you know that that's one of the speakings of God? Are you aware? All right. You also received the song that we... Actually, that is actually one of the ways God speaks to us. Do you understand? M- many of us are looking for the spectacular ones. Whereas God is... Very, see, it, it doesn't have to be spectacular. Hallelujah. All right. Um... Okay, come. Please come. Yes, come. See, it's very important though. You need to know how to hear from God. Um, I had one occurrence in school. I had one occurrence in school of recent. Um, in the in the evil room, I think one of the things we have used to train ourselves is um seeing in the spirits. Professor Lord. See, if you have not joined the prayer unit, please go and join them. It's very fun to be in the prayer unit. Do you get? It's very fun. All of us just like doing drama, drama among ourselves. I'm like, we have seen something. And I was like, yes, I saw it. And the most inter- interesting thing is that there are confirmations. Are you with me? All right. Can you share with us what you saw? Please, let me give you another mic. Let me. Okay. So in that occurrence, I was praying for somebody. And of course, we are praying for the 211 students. All the newcomers, well, let's pray for them. You know, that's what we need to train ourselves. So, the newcomers were 211 students. I think there was a 311 among them. So, and we were asked to pray for them. So, I prayed for the first person. I prayed for most of them. There are times that when I'm praying for the person, as I'm just touching the person, my eyes are open already. Are you with me? There are some that I have to maybe relax to hear what God is saying about the person. So, but there was this particular person. There were two people. I was praying for the first lady and there was a guy beside her. I know I was praying for the first lady, I've, I've seen many things, I've shared with her, you know, I know there's that joy when it's accurate, are you saying, it's that joy, is there that, ah, okay, I serve this word, you get, and while I was about to end the prayer, I saw a wool, a pink wool, a pink wool, you know, like needle and thread, I saw a thread, okay, a pink thread, so when you say pink thread, what do you think it will mean, by default, what do you think a pink thread means? Eh? She sews, I mean, she sews clothes, or she's a tailor, yes or yes? Oh, for me, that's what I first interpreted it as. I'm like, ah, this girl is a tailor. Mm-hmm. And I said that, that's, have you ever, do you, do you sew clothes? She said, no, ah, hey, hey, man of God is already in trouble. Do you get? Take notes, I've seen her correctly. Are you with me? So she said, no. I said, have you tried to learn it before? She said, no. And left to me, I'll, um, I would have said that, ah, you need to go and learn how to sew now. Do you get? But I thought that I don't worry, I'll get back to you. Then I saw the other guy also. Um, I saw when I was praying for him, I saw like people recording, like people were doing filmmaking. Of course, I got the interpretation of the second one wrong. That was a long time ago though. So now, for the first lady, I, I forgot about what I told her that I saw a pink pool. Then I think two days after, I was going to Tamak for our prayer meeting and all that. And while I was on Tamak, I was just joining the prayer. Then as we started praying, two minutes into the prayer, then God told me that. That would mean that she had a sister, pink wool. Very strange, I mean. So then I let the prayer out. I went to call her that. Did you have a younger sister? She said yes. I said, wow. I called the call actually. I didn't even bother to move on with it. Are you with me? So interpretation is very, very important. Some of you, some of you actually have seen visions. The average believer has seen visions. 
but it's just that you don't know that this is a vision. And take note, the things of the Spirit can be taught. You can learn the things of the Spirit. That's why they are the things of the Spirit. Most of them can be taught. The only probably things cannot be taught probably maybe when it has to do with your personal signs with the Holy Spirit, manifestations and the anointings and all that. But when it has to do with sin in the Spirit, even the first way to pray, to learn how to pray, is not by praying, it's by being taught. Hallelujah. That's why the apostles have seen Jesus pray, but they, they did not learn prayer by just start praying. They went to meet Jesus once, teach us how to pray. Are you with me? So let's just do one practical and I'll be out of here. So what did you see? Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, I saw like um, switching on a TV. Okay. Like, the TV was like switched off and then it was turned on. But then I didn't like have an interpretation of the, the TV was on. Yeah, it was switched off, then it turned on. Okay. But I think I That was the only thing you saw, right? Yes. And I have an interpretation. Alright, good. Um, so like while we're praying, the song that came to my heart was um to a plus song, they open my ears, but this time was open my eyes to see what you are doing now. Yeah. So like it means that while the TV was turned on, my spiritual senses were like open. So like TV means something visual, like you can see it audio yeah. visual. So this time around is like my spiritual senses like to- coming like reviving. Yeah. yeah. All right, I so. want to give a round of applause. Thank you very much. All right, so um, while we were praying, I, I saw a demonic mark. <clears throat> I saw someone have a demonic mark. So it was as if this person was oppressed. Now, I'll not call you out so that you'll not be embarrassed. But there was someone like that. And before I go, I'm going to pray for that person. So like I said, the things of the Spirit can be learned. Pastor Prosper, please help, help our people. Do you understand? It's good to exercise your gifts. He said you should not leave the midst of like you should not be isolated. When you if for birthdays, our friends we prophesy to each other. Oh, yes, start imbibing that in your friendship. You guys are friends, a group of friends. For birthday, prophesy to the person. Ah, uh, my brother, happy birthday to you. I don't have money to give you, of course, give gifts. Of course, but then I have something extra to give you. And by the word of the Lord and by the by the expression of the Holy Spirit, give the person a word. That's how you grow. And we do not come into these things by just prayer alone. We stay with the word. When you stay with the word, some of these um, speakings of the Lord will come more, you become more conscious about it. Hallelujah. All right. I think I've, I've talked too much already. Let's just round up the section. Um, can we pray for the person that someone was oppressed? I saw a mark. It was an evil mark. Can we pray for the person that was oppressed? That the Lord will deliver for that person in the name of Jesus. The Lord detests evil. The Lord will not allow wickedness to dwell before him. And we ask that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that person with that evil mark is delivered in the name of Jesus. That the person with that evil mark is delivered in the name of Jesus. Atikas, apera dakavas. We judge every work of wickedness in the name of Jesus. We judge every work of wickedness in the name of Jesus. The Lord calls you all blessed in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into a new realm of light in the name of Jesus. Light upon light in the name of Jesus. May you all continue to know the glory of God in the name of Jesus. And you will also see that glory in the name of Jesus. We ask that every dormant grace is activated in the name of Jesus. The grace of the seeing eye is activated in the name of Jesus. Hearing ears are activated in the name of Jesus. Knowing heart is activated in the name of Jesus. And may you all never be the same again. I bring you into a paradigm shift in the name of Jesus. I lay hold on all the graces of this house, graces of the past president, down, starting from Pastor Tosin down to the past president. I pray, I join graces with them, and I ask that in the name of Jesus, you will never be the same again. Amen. You shift into a new realm of light. Amen. Oh, light has come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, can we begin to rejoice? Light has come in the name of Jesus. Let's 
celebrate God in life of our Alonga and Pastor Costa. So let's have our seat in God's presence. Do we have first timers in the house? Quickly, quickly. If this is your first time in CSM, please rise up so we can celebrate you.